Welcome to this tutorial uh, by Films by Chris. I'm Chris with a K, filmsbychris.com, link in the description. And today we are going to be playing around with uh, SQLite 3. Um, so I don't claim to be a database expert, but I do use them to store data. And I thought I'd show you a little bit of SQLite 3, um, specifically version 3. Uh, for most of my web stuff, I use MySQL, uh, but SQLite is great for applications you might have. It's very commonly used, it, you know, if you have a smartphone and you have your, uh, depending on what application you use, but a lot of applications will use this type of database, the, uh, your contacts possibly, or your text messages. So it's really neat to, to just be able to understand it. And for the most part, the commands themselves are very, are the same or very similar to SQL or MySQL. And um, I'm pretty sure, you know, SQL is created by Microsoft, and there's MySQL and uh, SQL Lite, uh, and a lot of people pronounce them SQL uh, SQL Lite or or My or MySQL. Uh, but according to the creators of the programs, I'm pretty sure that they're not SQL, but SQL. The only one that's SQL, as far as I know, is the Microsoft version. Anyway, I just want to get out of the way. If I accidentally say SQL Lite, I apologize. I'm um, just pointing that out because. Someone's going to complain if I don't. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. I'm in an empty directory right now, and I have SQLite installed. If you are on a Debian-based system, you can use apt, aptitude, apt-get, or whatever package manager you use uh, on whatever distro you're on. I'm going to use aptitude to search real quick. I'm going to search for SQL, oops, SQLite, and you'll see you get a bunch of packages because there's different um, packages for different languages. We're going to work with the SQLite um, program itself from the command line. And as you can see, I have two here listed. I have SQLite, which if you look at the description, says that it's version two. Uh, but I'm going to be working with SQLite 3 here specifically, and there are some differences. Um, so make sure if you're going to be working with a database that already exists, figure out which one it is. Uh, as you can see, I already have this installed. If you don't have it installed, use your package manager install. For example, you can do sudo apt install SQLite 3 and go ahead and install it. I already have it installed, so let's go ahead and get working with it. Once it's installed, all you have to do is type in the name of the command and then give it the name of the database. If the database um, doesn't already ex exist, it will create it. So we'll just call make create one called example.db. And now we have created, you can see we're at the SQLite um, prompt here, and you can do dot help for help, but I'm gonna show you some basic commands here. So first thing we're gonna do is create a table. So if you're unfamiliar, you have a database and in that database you have tables. And these tables are where you store your information. You can have multiple tables within one database. And you can kind of think of uh, tables like spreadsheets. They aren't really, but they can be displayed like that. Um, but just think of it as like rows and columns is the easiest way to think about it. And here I'm gonna type in some commands and it's usually common for the actual commands to be all capitalized and then the information you're entering to be uh, lowercase doesn't have to be that way, but I'm gonna try to do it that way just to keep it, uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Just to do it the same way all the time and make it easier to read. So I'm gonna type in create, I'm gonna type it all capital, but again, it doesn't have to be all capital. I'm gonna create a table. What am I gonna call this table? I will call this table, table one. And then here I'm gonna say parentheses and what I'm going, and then you want to end every command with a semicolon. If you don't, you'll go down to the next line and you realize what what did I do wrong? You just put a semicolon and hit enter. We'll give an example of that later. But I'm going to create this table with well, I'm going to create two columns, but really it's going to create three. So I'm going to say the first column is going to call called f name, and I'm just going to make it a text. You can do different types of input. I'm not going to get into that much detail on this. Text is um, obviously there's different types like characters and dates and numbers, types of formats for these um, these entry points. But uh, I'm just gonna do text, just to keep things simple. But if you're really gonna get into database stuff, you really wanna learn more about the different formats. Anyway, I'm gonna say uh, F name text, comma, L name. And this, this is the name of my columns. So I'm gonna have a column for names, the first name and the last name. I can call this first name, last name. I just chose to call them L name and F name, just to keep things short. And again, text is the type of text it is. You can also put in here, not null, meaning that you have to have an entry in there. It will, you'll return an error if you leave that blank. And that's up to you, depending on what's entering. 
if we're creating a database of names, a table of names of people, you might have their first name, their last name, their middle name, their phone number, their address, but maybe someone doesn't have a middle name. So you don't want to leave that null, but maybe you always want a first and last name. You can say not null. Um, so I'll go ahead and put that in there for both of these. And again, capitalizing this because they're actual commands of SQLite. I'll go ahead and enter and we have created that table. No, no output means everything was successful. Now, uh, let's go ahead and insert something into that table. So I'm gonna say insert into, and again, the name of our table is table one. And then here I'm going to insert uh, these values. Oops, let's go ahead and put a space here and spell things properly. And here I should be able to uh, put in a name. I'll put in a first name like John and then separate by a comma. And I'm using quotations here. You can use single or double quotes. And I'm gonna just name him John Smith. And if everything goes right, we have now inserted that name into the table. Let's go ahead and quickly insert another name. I'm gonna hit up arrow to bring up that last command. And I'll just put in someone named Sam Smith. And then I'm gonna put in someone named Rick Smith's son. And then we'll also put in a name, we'll say Rick uh, Johnson. And let's just put one more name in there. We'll say, I'm just trying to think of a name, Tim. And we'll say, give this guy a name of Peterson. There we go. Now we have another names in there. How do we view what's in the database? Well, we can say uh, now select, and what do we want to select? Right now, I'm just going to do an asterisk, meaning select all the information from the database, we're gonna, or from the table. We're going to say from table one. And I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And as you can see, I forgot to put a semicolon, which I forget to do quite often. Uh, and what I'll just do here is hit semicolon. That means that's the end of that command. And then I'll hit enter. And there you go. It displayed all the names in the database and all the information from the database. Uh, we can also now do a query and grab certain rows if they equal something. So I can say here, I'll say select all from table one, and then I can say where, and I can say F name, and I can say is Rick. Okay, don't forget the semicolon there. So we're selecting, we want to display all the information from the table one where the first name equals Rick. No such column Rick. Okay, uh, I think I have to put this in quotations. There we go. So now we have, we have Rick Smithson and Rick Johnson. Okay, now let's go in a little bit further into this. And let's say we want to do partial matches. What I can do is, or, and also we can do case sensitive. So if I do a lowercase r here, you'll see it won't return anything. But if I do instead of is, I can say like. So it's like Rick. Now it's going case insensitive. Uh, so let's go here and say instead of F name, let's do L name for last name. And I'm going to say uh, Smith. So now I'm going to find all the information from table one where the last name is like Smith. I do that and we get Smith and Smith, but we don't get Smith's son. So what we can do here is I can come in here and say a percent sign on there, and now it's going to autocomplete the rest of that. And I'm gonna try something right here real quick. I'm not sure if this is gonna work. Okay, that doesn't work. So it's gotta be the percent sign. So there we go. We got everyone whose last name is Smith or Smith's son. We can also go the other way, and we can say any name that is like and maybe ends in son. So we got Rick Smith's son, Rick, uh, John's son and Tim Peter's son. Uh, and of course you can put um, uh, the um, percent sign on both sides of those. I don't have any names that really are like that where I can put, uh, let's just say select everything from table one again. And yeah, not really. So, but you can put, if I want to percent percent like this and it will match everything that has son in the middle there, again, case sensitive, and that's because we're saying like. 
Okay, so we've searched for uh, exact matches, and we've searched for uh, partial matches, case insensitive. Um, but let's say you have two people with the same name, and you want to uh, pick a particular one. Well, by default, if you don't set a primary key column, which we can talk about in a moment, um, it automatically creates one, and it's not showing it by default. Uh, but what I can do here is I can tell it specific columns. So let's go here, let's go back here and say, okay, we want to select everything from table one. And we can see that we've now, we're have now we now looking at everything. But if I want, I can say instead of everything, I can say F name. And now it's just displaying first names. Or I can say L name, and it's only displaying the last name. What I can also do is put in here row ID. And now each column has its own number uh, that SQLite has automatically added and increments each time you add an entry. And this comes in handy when you're trying to make sure you're working with the exact right entry. Again, you don't want to delete, if you're going to delete or update a column, which we're going to talk about in a moment, you want to make sure you're doing the exact one where this column here, this row ID, is what you're going to really want to work with at that point. Um, so real quick, let's look at uh, deleting a row from, from there. So let's say I wanted to remove uh, here. Let's go ahead and just list everything out again. Uh, so we have John Smith, uh, Sam Smith, Rick Smithson, Rick Johnson, and Tim Peterson. And let's say I wanted to uh, delete Sam Smithson, or I'm sorry, Sam Smith. Now, I can say delete any match where it's Sam and Smith, but what if there's two Sam Smiths? Well, what I can do here again is I can say, let's uh, grab everything from this table. Let's clear the screen. Uh, where the last name is like Smith. And instead of showing everything, let's go ahead and just say row ID. And actually, we want to do something like um, row ID, and I think it's just a comma here. And we can say L name, and I can say comma F name. And again, it's displaying it here in the order I put it. So even though in the database it goes uh, row ID, last name, or first name, last name, I can display it last name, first name, or whatever parts of that I want. So now I can quickly see, okay, he has an ID of two. I can now say uh, I want to delete from table one where the ID, or sorry, row ID equals, and I can say two, and I know for sure it's only going to delete because that row ID uh, is set to be, um, uh, I don't want to say individual, what's the word I'm looking for? Unique, unique, no two, uh, the database won't let two have the same ID. So now that I do that, I can do that success because there was no error output and now we can say let's go ahead and look at everything in table one again and you can see that that gentleman Sam Smith is now removed from the database and again if we do it like this you can see that he's gone and let's go ahead and just say everything from that table you can see everything and you can see that we have one and two is gone uh, we can I guess theoretically put in another two, but really if I if we enter a new one, so let's say we wanted to add something else, um, we'll just add a new person here. I'll say insert into, into again, that doesn't have to be capital. It's just considered proper as far as making it easier to read table one. And we will say values and we will say Peter Thompson, how about that? Semicolon there. And now if we list them all out, you can see, oh, not that, let's do all of them. It's continued on, it doesn't go back and fill in number two. It just looks at the last one and continues from there. Okay, so we've deleted people, we've added people. Here's another thing, uh, Let's let's add a new column. So we already have a database with a table. We want to add something into that table, a new column. We want to have a uh, phone number in there so that we have now have contact information. So what we're going to do is we're going to alter the table. So we'll say alter table, whoops, and we're going to alter table one. And again, you can have more than one table. Add, and we're going to add a column 
Oh, I always misspell it. Yeah, there we go. Column, and we're going to add a phone column. And again, uh, there's different types. I'm just going to say text here for the type of column it is, but really there's probably better options for that. We're going to go ahead and do that. And now there's a column. Now, if I go through here and I list uh, all this out again, let's just, let's just say everything, even though it won't show the row ID. You can see there's another pipe symbol there as far as the output. So they all have a column for phone number, but they don't necessarily have a phone number uh, entered in there. So let's go ahead and update somebody's uh, phone number. So again, let's do this. Let's, let's go here. So now we can see, let's say we want to update um, Tim Peterson's phone number. Uh, I am going to now say update table one. And we're going to set the phone, which is what we named that column to, 555-555-1234. And we're going to say, we're going to do that where the row ID equals, and we said we'll do that for uh, Tim Peterson, we'll say five. So we're making sure we're only editing, updating that one person. Uh, so we can go ahead and do that. I forgot the semicolon, put the semicolon and hit enter. And now if we show these all again, uh, but we say, here we can say phone as well. There we go. You can see that Tim Peterson now has a phone number. Now, if I didn't put uh, the ID there, I can, if I just said update this, I think this will work. I haven't tried this yet. Update table, set phone to that. So uh, uh, time you might want to do this. Let's see if it works. Yeah. Um, you can see now everybody has that phone number. And that would have overwritten, if I gave it a different phone number, it would have overwritten Tim Peterson. So if, again, if I, if I come in here and I now say 5555 and display that out, everyone has the phone number 5555. Uh, that could be useful if you create a new column, let's say. And let's say you're creating a database and everyone's going to have a um, avatar, a little image of themselves. But you're creating this database and you don't have the avatars for everybody yet, but you have a default avatar. You could theoretically put in uh, a value there, whether it's the you know information for the avatar, the location of the avatar, or even just some sort of text saying that it hasn't been filled in yet, because obviously when you're writing your code to display the avatar, you can say, if empty, display this. But let's say you wanted to put in an avatar for everybody that links to something in particular. You could do that in the database. It wouldn't be the way I would do it. But that's just a random example that you could do. So uh, we've done all that. Um, yeah, so let me exit out of this. Actually, it's dot quit to get out. And don't forget your semicolon there. Uh, I thought it was dot quit. Dot quit help. Uh, dot quit fix this program. Oh, I guess without the semicolon. The one time I remembered the semicolon, I did not need it. Okay, and as you can see, there's lots of, of information in there on um, commands. It's right there and it'll help for you. Uh, but let's list this out so you can see the database we created. And if I do file on it, it will tell us that SQLite3.x database, uh, last written using this version of, uh, if I said SQL, I meant SQLite uh, database. Uh, so yeah, again, uh, a lot of applications use this. Probably on your phone, there's, you probably have a number of uh, databases like this. Uh, if you can access them, again, your, your contacts possibly, your text messages. You can pull them out and look at all your information, all your, your conversations and whatnot, back them up and access them on your desktop like this. But you have to make sure that you're using the right version. So writing the file command, again, on the database will tell you what type of database it is, whether it's version 2 or 3. So that's one way. And there could be other databases, formats that it's using out there. So that is our first look at working with these databases. And from there, we were working within the application the whole time. But let's say you want to write a shell script that does all this. Well, you know 99% of how to do it already because the commands are almost the same. But we'll look at that in the next video. So I do thank you for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There's a link in the description. Check out there. You can search through all my videos from both my channels. And if you want to support, there's links to that in the description of the video as well, as well as on my website. I thank you for watching. And as always, I hope that you have a great day.